uh, copy paste that for later. Okay, 13 minutes. That's, that's short for Nod's video. We, we can watch that. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, I, I, I have comments one second in. <laughs> He's... <laughs> How many times have you seen this maneuver? I'll tell you where I normally see that maneuver. I see that in apology YouTuber apology videos. The start looking at the OBS and then go... <sighs> Every time. That's the YouTuber apology intro. I know he's not apologizing for anything. It's just, that's just funny. <laughs> Hello friends, this is Odds, and yesterday the developers of DBD held a Q&A session at Reddit where they answer questions from the community. I followed it really closely, and I was very disappointed. Um, this video is not going to be a summary of everything that happened. Shit, I was hoping we could just use Odds to summarize it because I have not seen it yet, but it's okay. You'll find one down below we'll if you want to see the whole thing. Uh, instead, I'm going to nitpick a few other posts to yes. show you what I found so disappointed. Yes, get In one cynical word, Odds. It's just... Ambition. There's just no ambition where whatever gameplay is concerned. Now, about some of the things that the developers talk about, such as skins. Yeah, they tell us, oh, we're porting skins from DVD Mobile. Yes, we're creating... <laughs> I will say they definitely have a lot of ambition when it comes to skins. That is... Okay, so if the whole thing is about ambition and then not having any right now, I would say that's completely fair. They don't have any ambition because there's no contest. Ambition is basically driven by the desire to be better because you need to be better, but there's no need for DBD to be better because there's nothing else that you can go to like DBD. So what, what are you going to do? So that is correct. I would say behavior has a massive lack of ambition because there's nothing driving them to do so. This new system where you're going to be able to upgrade your skins from the Rift. That's kind of like what Fortnite did, where you get a costume or a skin and it gets progressively cooler. Are they actually I guess. doing that? So oh in, those, in those regards, the, the game is ambitious. You know, obviously in their release date for new content, the game is very ambitious. But in polishing gameplay and polishing the already existing experience and in things other than events and stuff, that's where things slow down very dramatically. So this is one that I've asked the developers to do for a very long time in behalf of the, on behalf of the DVD tournament organizer community. And it is a question of, are there plans to update custom lobbies? Uh, give more options, more spectator lots, free cam, anything at all. <clears throat> and they say this has been considered by the team for tournament reasons, but they're not going to be arriving. I'm not going to update the behavior count right now until I look at the, uh, the AMA myself. <laughs> I'll press the button. Thank you for bringing this up. This is something we are looking into for sure, though it is not our top priority at the moment. Hey, we got priority in there. I'll, I'll, I'll start running up the counter when I actually look at the Q&A myself. The game anytime soon due to priority reasons. I do think that if this game was more watchable, that would be really nice. Anytime I hold events or I've witnessed or watched events from other people, there's things like this going on, <laughs> like spectator bugs. Okay. To play devil's advocate in defense for behavior, I think 99.9% .9 of the community does not give a fuck about comp in any way. So them saying that, you know, spectator cams for custom comp matches and stuff is not a top priority. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Why would it be? It, it, it applies to almost none of their player base. So, I, not to defend behavior here, but I, I understand why it's a low priority. Why would they? It makes no sense jittery cameras, problems that result in teams having to reset and, and tournament organizers wasting we time. Watch it makes watching yeah. DVD less You don't fun. really watch comp, uh, But I understand. It's a low priority. It's a very small most of the time, percentage anyway. of the player. But so, you know, fair enough. But then I ask a question myself that I thought was actually quite important for a big part of the player base, which was the following. When Stranger Things came back, the perks that were common now are oh, yeah. no longer common and they're licensed perks. So that means that a new player, for example, doesn't have Jolt, doesn't have Better Together, doesn't have some perks that were honestly really, really nice. So I ask, are there any plans to I still think or sucks. improve the current pool of common perks? Um, the common perks are, of course, Resilience, they are Spice from the Shadows, Sloppy Butcher, all those perks. Are there any plans to improve them? Now, I didn't ask if they would make new ones. Improve Sloppy Butcher? <laughs> I don't think they're, they're nerfing Sloppy Butcher soon, aren't they? I will say, though, a lot of the default perks are very bad. Like, you're never going to see anyone running 
Oh, God. It's hard to even think about what the default perks are. Every time I think of default perks, I accidentally say, like, you know, Bloodhound or something, but it's not, that's not a default perk. What, what are, like, the default perks? Noed, obviously, is super good. Sloppy Bitcher is super good. Dark Sense is pretty shit, but it's, it's not awful. Oh, improving, as in adding more base kit. Okay. That would be fine. This is not happening, unironically, is very good with hyperfocus. But it's basically only on that build and for no other reason. Yeah, underlying thing is dog shit. Okay. What? But they still answer that. They say, this is something we were discussing yesterday. Right now, we have no immediate plans to introduce new general perks. Fine, completely fine. New killers are also up against new survivors, so gen regression perks are not necessarily needed at this level when players are learning to play the game. And the best character perks... Holy are shit, I just noticed that fat ratio. The fat odd starver ratio destroyed. This is, uh, this is where my problems begin. This is such a lack of, of ambition. It is such a, well, we don't really need to make it better. Because, yeah. I mean, you can they know it. the amount of uh, downvotes and the very, very um, reasonable reply by the next user that people did not like this. Uh, Jolt is widely regarded as one of the best balance perks in the game, and it is extremely useful for people at all levels, especially beginners, since it works in most characters and is simple. Also, the fact that beginner survivor perks like Prove Thyself and Resilience affect gen speed on the survivor side, why would killers not need a gen perk on their side? Um, that's a fair point. I also believe that the question was to do with the perks that currently exist, not adding new ones, which is a great thing to do since characters like Huntress and Wraith have so many perks that are useless and could easily be reworked to fill this gap. Yep, that's completely fair. If you didn't catch it, uh, as I said, some perks are no longer uh, common, and these perks are now gone. These are the common perks that both sides have access to. Especially on the killer side, we have at least six or seven perks that are generally borderline useless. From this list, I only... Let's see. Uh, very good, very good. Not bad anymore. It's just outdated. It just got power creeped. I, th I still think Whispers is good on, like, Doctor and stuff, but it just got power creeped. I, I, I don't even know what this is, so it's bad. Bias is pretty bad. Monster Shrine is pretty bad. Bitter Murmur. Yeah? Okay. Oh, shit. I was still on Discord, so I was... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> just trying to sleep. I was just yelling through her mic. Okay. Um, Thrill the Hunt, good on hex builds for no other reason. Uh, distressing, situationally good, but not very great. Deer Stalker. Yeah, I would say there are just too many ore reading perks now for this to be considered good. Unrelenting, absolute dog shit. Iron Grass, pretty damn bad. Shattered Hope, pretty bad. And City is pretty bad. That's fair. Only see four perks that are worth running. Oh, for beginners, uh, then, yeah. And also. some of them are even hard to use for beginners. Or, or hard to use on some killers. So, like, the fact that the developers think that these perks are fine for beginners and that base perks reflect this, the only thing this reflects is that these perks are really, really horribly designed, some of them, and not suitable for beginners. Some of the best beginner perks are locked behind paywall. Or, or lock behind charts. It's true that some of the killers in the future will be easier to unlock, but I, I still found this question a little bit <sighs> lacking in any kind of ambition. I would have loved Thanks, to, instead of reading this, be like, you know what? That is a great point. We are going to redesign perks. We're going to swap some things around so that beginners have a great experience and they have every tool they need to learn the amazing world of Dead by Daylight. And we'll be sure to keep that in mind. You know, mm. that would have been a great answer. I would have loved to see that, but no, we don't get that. Next up, do you plan for survivors to be able to inspect other survivor builds before the game starts? I find this to be an incredibly important feature. And the developers say, this is something we've also thought about, but we are currently restricted due to flexibility in the lobby screens. <laughs> We're updating these old screens gradually, and you should see some improvements over the next years. <laughs> Smiley Bad. face. This... Uh, I, I, I share the sentiment. Years? <laughs> what do you mean zero. years? Dead by Daylight Mobile, this is a screenshot from a video recorded two years ago. More than two years ago, Dead by Daylight Mobile already Why did, had a feature. Did Ots glitch out? What the fuck? How'd that happen? 
years ago. More than two years ago, Dead by Daylight Mobile already the hell? Why, had a why that happen? That was creepy. <laughs> Why'd you do that? I didn't do anything. <laughs> My hand wasn't even on the mouse. If you click and hold, it goes two times. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Cool. Um, yeah, no. I, I don't understand why there is not a... Like, what, what, what was their reasoning? Currently restricted due to flexibility in the lobby screens. That doesn't make any sense because that's an overlay that goes on top of the lobby screen. So are they, are they trying to say that it's like... We currently restricted due to flexibility in the lobby screens. What does that actually mean? It, 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 doesn't, it doesn't actually even mean anything. Because th there's just, there's no reason to not add that. Our spaghetti is so bad it takes years to change the UI. I mean, I guess, but there, there's... I, I can't think of a single good excuse as to why they couldn't do that. They're not changing the background of the lobbies. It's not new models. It's just you're just slapping some PNGs over players. Like, it's really not that complicated. Huh. Okay. Dead by Daylight Mobile, this is a screenshot from a video recorded two years ago. More than two years ago, Dead by Daylight Mobile already had a feature to see your teammates of, uh, out, not outfits, sorry, um, loadouts. I understand that you cannot just put this on a DVD lobby, but it could come up on a DVD loading screen. And it could have an option thing so that you don't share your loadout if you don't want to, if people want to play with their private loadouts. Something like this should not be this difficult to implement. The fact that they are happy to say that this is coming in years, years, is <laughs> insane to me. But it does make sense if we read one of the next questions that was asked. Um, uh, Krasul Beer asks, are there any plans to further bridge the Subaru friends and solo Subaru gap by providing solo players with more information about their allies? Uh, we now had a HUD system where solo players can kind of know what their teammates are doing a little bit, and that would be great, but I, I do think this should be expanded. And obviously seeing your teammates' perks and other stuff like that, that would be amazing, right? So are, are there mm. further plans to bridge the Subaru friends with solo, which I think is an enormous gap right now? Well, what else can be done to do that? I think seeing builds in the start, it's basically just the last question, right? What else can you do in order to bridge that gap? I think the, the UI HUD has been extremely helpful. VoIP? Ooh. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know if that would make the game better. <laughs> Emotes for communication? Okay. I don't know. I feel like... Oh, like a fixed messaging system. Well, I think that's sort of what they did with the UI system. It, it's sort of the same thing. Like, for example, if you're using the UI system, you'll see me do this all the time when I'm playing solo queue. You don't need a, a text line from Meg saying, you know, going for the unhook. You can just use context clues. One guy's getting chased. One guy's on a gen. One guy's on a hook. I should be the one who goes to save because that guy's still on a gen, right? If you just use basic common sense, you kind of already have that. Now, of course, there are exceptions. Like, sometimes that guy was actually AFK or something, and you couldn't possibly know that. Whatever. But just, like, with just the bare minimum common sense, I don't know. <laughs> Not everyone is that aware. Okay, but I'm, I'm asking for literally toddler-like levels of intelligence. You players don't have any way of understanding context, though? You don't have to. As long as you research what the UI system does which should take you about 14 seconds to learn what the icons are, they're, they're pretty self-explanatory. Then you should be able to put those synapses together and figure it out. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying everyone does that. And yeah, of course, I, I guess I, I, the question is, how far do you cater to people that just don't want to learn? <laughs> I don't know, man. Maybe an angry face emo to avoid people healing you. <laughs> I don't know. UI does not give you your idea where your teammates are or where they're going. No, it definitely gives you an idea of where they're going. It doesn't give you an idea of exactly where they are, though. At what point, though, how would you know? I mean, like, or, or, why, why should you know, I guess, is the question. Why should you have that much information? Basically, you're just giving everybody just or reading all the time then for everybody? 
You're just giving everyone, like, bond? I don't know. A ping system's a good idea? Yeah, I'm okay with the ping system. It kind of already exists in a map if you wanted to use it, but as, like, a base kit thing, I'm mostly okay with that. Because Survive with Friends have that. I mean, not even Survive with Friends has exact locations of where you are. You can say, I'm like, yeah, I'm running for the unhook, but I'm willing to bet 99% of Survive with Friends are not, like, identifying, yeah, I'm in, I'm in clock spot three, going to two. Like, what? those people don't need communication to beat you. If they're, you're going against that team, you're going to fucking lose anyway. It doesn't matter. So, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like just giving permanent aura reading to every solo queue player is actually... It's actually kind of much. So, I don't know. Hey, Bruno, what's up? Also, I'm sorry for ignoring all these resubs. I'm trying to consolidate everything to uh, one video. I'll read them after. But thank you. Oh. They say, we always monitor the difference between Survivor Friends solo, uh, Survivor Friends and solo. But this is strange because they don't tell us what it is. They don't tell us if if there's any major difference. Well, they say they monitor it and they don't say anything else. So we have to, we're led to assume that there's not a great difference, even though subjectively it feels like playing solo is awful. I, I don't, I don't think, I don't think that they're claiming that there's not much of a difference. If there wasn't much of a difference, I don't think they would be shipping like the whole UI changes and stuff like that. If there was no difference, there would be no need to improve it. And so they wouldn't do anything to improve it. So, I'm sure they know that, obviously, Survivor Threads is stronger than Solo Queue. No one's arguing that. Um, but I guess the debate is whether or not they're doing enough to try to bridge that gap even further. And again, I don't know what exactly... What else you can do without starting to make it unfair towards Killer. Difference is the microphone? I, yeah, but you can't really... I don't know. I, I feel like putting default on, like... VoIP in this game is a bad idea. I think the vast majority of people do not want to talk to their teammates in this type of game. Using voice chat, anyway. I've played a lot of games over the years, and I would say the vast majority do not want to voice chat with you. With anonymous people. You might think that you want to, but... I mean, you might want to, but I, I think the majority would not want that. Was it bad in TCM? Yeah, I had to, I had to staple that shit so fast. <laughs> you know what? Inappropriate things are said. Yeah, most people don't voice chat in, in most games. I, I, I think that's... that's uh, Just from my anecdotal experience, playing games for, God, 20 years online now, most people would prefer to not voice chat. So I don't think making it a default thing to say, well, it's fine now, you can voice chat, is a good idea. I don't think that's a good idea. If you had it, like, default off and there was an option to turn it on, I think that would be okay. I just don't think it would really improve much because most people just wouldn't turn it on. I'm willing to bet anyway. Yeah, Altex, I was uh, seeing that too. Oh my god. <laughs> auto, auto mod flagged you because you said abuse some POC. Even though you were just commenting on watching some of them get abused by horrible people. <laughs> Okay, um, but yeah, I, I don't really know what else they could add. But maybe he goes over it. Our current stance is that lack of information it is not the crux of the matter. Uh, it's not the crux of the problem. But rather, that friends work together by nature, and so survivors don't as much. Yeah. This, to me, is, is insane. You should see the replies to this and look at the amount of downloads. Oh, I can't wait. Like, this is insane. <laughs> of course, if I'm you excited. play with strangers you are less likely to help them because you don't know what they have you don't know what they want to do you don't know what they're prepared to do you don't know if they have any perk to get a second chance so i do think that this question was answered poorly i, I generally don't understand what they were going for here it's almost like they're implying that solo players are just kind of lone wolves and they just don't want to help each other uh, when i honestly think that most people would if they knew what was going on uh, if you saw if you saw some of the replies, many people seem to agree with the sentiment. Yeah, but now that being said, it is true. Sometimes you play solo survivor and you find people that don't want anything to do with you. Uh, in fact, if anything goes wrong, they'll kill themselves on the hook immediately. So someone asks, um, with yeah, but what do we? What, what, what like what does he want? 
to be different. It seems like we're moving on from that topic. What 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 does he want to like change? I I actually don't know what you can like add this like, without making it unfair in the other way. Survivor should see perks. That that's fair. I I agree. You should be able to see survivor perks when you're loading into a lobby. Hundred percent. I can't really think of any downsides to that other than people like dodging lobbies when they see like distortion, self clear, <laughs> or urban evasion. <laughs> Uh, I, I could see people dodging lobbies for that, but whatever. That'd probably be the only actual downside. And frankly, you should be able to dodge those people in solo queue because that shit's a nightmare. So, yeah, I, I would agree. If if the whole complaint is they won't add survivor uh, perks visible in the lobby to other fellow survivors, um, then yes, I completely agree. But that's that's pretty much it. I can't think of anything else you would do that wouldn't start being like, I guess not unfair is the word. Because, yeah, obviously, Survivor Friends can still kind of call stuff out. I just think with the tiniest modicum of common sense, the UI system already tells you that stuff. And people just don't want to, like, I don't know, learn past the second grade level. So, I, I, I don't know. But, yeah, I would definitely agree adding the Survivor icon for perks in the uh, lobby is a no-brainer. And it should not be something that takes years to add. That should be something that can whip up in a couple of days. Bots taking over disconnected players, well, this was a welcome change, but players would rather dodge the DC penalty and just kill themselves on hook. Is there any plan to combat survivors killing themselves on the first hook deliberately? Now, I mm -hmm. understand it's really difficult to That's hold the hand of survivors or topic. any player to force them to do something, but this is what the developer said. I wish I had more to say on this topic, but no, we don't have any plans for this. We hear your concern and recognize your frustration, but we just don't have any reasonable solutions here. Sad, but true. It is sad, but true. <laughs> no, like, actually, this is such a hard, a hard thing to fix. Wouldn't get rid of the, the, there is no good way to fix this. If you got rid of the DC penalty, yes, people would, you would get bots. And so if people didn't want to play games, you would have scenarios where at least you have a fourth bot teammate now, right? That's option one, you remove the DC penalty. Option two is you make it so you can't kill yourself on hook. Because right now, the game is sending mixed messages where you get a bot if you DC, but if you DC, you're penalized, so no one wants to DC, so they kill themselves, so no one benefits from anything, and everyone is just... Everyone is just screwed, and that that's the bad part. Just delete 4% escape. Again, though, removing the ability to... If you do that, then you're forcing people to stay in matches that they find, for whatever reason, miserable. And a lot of these are very just... Stupid reasons. Oh, I just don't like wraiths. I'm gonna just kill myself on hook. Stupid. Oh, hey, hey, the skull merchant's keeping on this in this match for 45 minutes. Justified. That's what I'm saying. There's so many reasons that are not good and so many reasons that are good. And that's why I I kind of sympathize with the devs a little bit because it's it's so like there's just so many examples of in any solution being bad for something else. Like I actually don't know how you fix that. Because yeah, I would prefer if DC penalties were removed. That way, if I got a teammate that didn't want to play against whatever, I would at least have a bot that did something rather than a teammate who was just dead and did nothing, right? But at the same time, that would effectively remove certain things from the game. Like if you were, God forbid, a Skull Merchant main or a Knight main or a Hag main or a Twins main or anything like that, you don't get to play Dead by Daylight anymore, pretty much. And as much as I joke about hating people that play those characters... I don't think it's the right solution either to just say you don't get to play anymore. I know we're all XD good, good, and tr I would like that personally, but I still don't think that's a good thing overall. You know what I mean? I'm not hearing a downside. I know. You have to be, you have to think about context outside of me and my opinions and the stream and stuff like that. And that's the obvious downside to that. Um, so it's, it's confusing. In Dota, you have low priority penalty, so you rematch with other griefers once griefed. Right, but a lot of the time, people that are, are killing themselves on hook, for example, are not griefing. They're just going against a miserable match. They're going against a quad slowdown blight with Alcaring and Compound 33 who's slugging everyone in for four minutes on the ground. Like, you gotta realize that both sides have incredibly obnoxious things to deal with. And so, if someone wants to leave in that scenario, they're not griefing, they just don't want to be griefed. So, it's, it's so complicated to fix, and I understand why they're saying this. 
I don't know of any reasonable solution. I thought about it too. I actually don't know what you should do. You can't force people to stay in a scenario in which they're miserable. Now, I do think people are babies and think way too many scenarios are miserable scenarios, but there's also a lot of legit reasons to, to not want to play too, so... I... Bots will replace them. Yeah, I know, I know. But then, like I said, the, uh, the other side is we would just have, you know, 50% of the games just having half bots, and that would just be lame for a different reason. It'd probably be better than what we currently have, but it wouldn't be much better, you know what I mean? Fix the miserable scenarios. That's the true solution. Fixing the actual miserable scenarios. But that is also impossible because a miserable scenario is a subjective thing. So how do you decide who, what's miserable? You can't. So that, that's the whole point. The whole point is I'm sympathizing with what Mike is saying here because I have no idea how you actually do it. Yeah, I think a surrender option would be a great idea. It would require all four survivors to unanimously agree. The game would have to have been going on for more than five minutes just to make it so they load into a nurse match and people can't just immediately give up. Um, when I made my stupid fake patch video years ago, that's what I said. You should make it so uh, there's a, a surrender button. The killer can surrender or all four survivors have to agree to surrender and then you can just stop playing the game and it'll be a win for whatever side you know, doesn't. Uh, you know, And there'll be some like compensation blood points for not having a full match played out, things like that. I think that would be fine. I get it. Listen, I get it. I get it. There, there's nothing you can do to, to, to force players not to do something they want yeah, to do. Exactly. But to, to hear that they, they tell us that information is not important. So they don't give us something like this. But then they also tell us that if people kill themselves, well, you just can't help it. There's nothing we can do. There's, we cannot have some kind of system that maybe if you try to kill yourself on hook, you do get replaced by a bot. We can find some kind of system for people to have some kind of bonus or encouragement if they don't kill themselves on hook. We don't have some... Mm, bonus or encouragement. See, I, I don't think that would work. I, I don't think having, like, you know... How would you even apply the bonus? If you load into a Skull Merchant match, you just... Everyone gets a, a bonus amount of blood points if they, if they play the game out. Like, how do you decide the factors that give you the bonus? <laughs> like even that's complicated that's what i'm saying this shit is like it's it's so impossible to fix and uh, yeah th th that's my point giving people like a blood point bonus or something like that no one cares people are already not getting blood points by killing themselves on hooker dcing the reason is they don't want to go against whatever they're going against blood points is at the bottom of their concerns right now so i don't necessarily agree that giving a bonus or something would do anything at all like, I don't, I don't think that would do anything. Some kind of system to encourage good teamwork. So, like, it's just... Com yeah, like, what, though? I, I need the specifics. Like, I, I... I cannot believe I'm siding with behavior on this specific topic. Again, not adding perk icons is incredibly dumb. But this specific topic, I... He's not actually giving any solutions. Because there are none. I actually don't think there's any way to actually do it. Complete lack of ambition. Complete lack of ambition. And this is just making me I don't think that's lack of ambition. There's just no solution to that whatsoever. Because for the last few years, I've been very personally involved in trying to send feedback from the community to the developers and making videos about issues uh, about the game. But some of these things are going to change. Uh, videos covering specific issues of the game that are in the game right now or in a future PTV. I'm never making videos like this again. I am never making videos like this again. I'm, I've made quite a few over the years. Addressing problematic perks or add-ons or, or maps or anything like that. Uh, I, I, I'm going to stop. This does nothing. Most of the times when I make a video like this, it has no impact on the game. The developers <laughs> do what they were going to do anyway, yes. whatever that might be. And every now and then, they do something close to what I suggest in the video. And then for the next months or Join years, us. I have to hear from people in the community accusing me of getting a perk nerf or oh. getting a killer nerfed or doing something. when Brother, I, I feel you on that. that. Oh. God, the amount of times, like, I'll make a video, hey, this PTB Trickster, pretty fucking dumb, you shouldn't do that, and then they nerf Trickster, but then they over-nerf him way past the point I wanted them nerfed, and then everyone, like, yells at me, like, you got the shit nerfed, like, bitch, that's not even what I asked for, <laughs> I just said, hey, maybe don't give infinite knives with the Death Throws compilation, because that's pretty stupid, 
that was pretty much it. And then everyone's like, oh, it's Scott's fault. Like, what the fuck? I didn't... It's not even what I wanted. I have no such impact. So yeah, I, I absolutely that, feel firm on like, that. This video, we're mostly for the people that keep up with the game not so much and want to know what is strong and what is coming. And for those people, I'm sorry, but this kind of videos, I'm just not making them. I will also probably refrain from making more videos with proactive suggestions. Videos such as, oh, fix this. Oh, fix that. Oh, change this. Oh, this killer needs that. Uh, maybe I'll make one more of this and then I'll never do it again. Because this ultimately, this would be for the community. I, I don't think the developers... Yeah, when has it ever not been, though? The entire point of making those videos is not to actually have the change happen. <laughs> it's to just make a cool video that people watch and, you know, get money from YouTube. I, I, I don't know. Maybe he truly is the absolute paragon of, of niceness, and he truly thought that the devs are actually, like, gave a shit about what he was saying. But, I mean, come on. He, yeah, he had to have known that they're not, like, they're not gonna, they're just not gonna listen to that stuff. <laughs> he, has to, he has to have known that. Really? There's no point in being a fog whisperer anymore. There never was. It's literally just for PR. That's all it's ever been. I don't know why people have this crazy idea about fog whispers that they're supposed to have like a, a back door into the, the devs. I don't like where I'm going with the sentence. A back channel to like get into the devs like, man, that doesn't make it any better. A smoldering anus to get into the devs and give them, you know, information and suggestions and stuff like that. Um, it's never been for that. And I know that because I saw the whole Fog Whisper agreement when Jen got it like 50 billion years ago. It's just to represent the game in a positive light. That's, that's basically all it exists for. It's just positive PR for the game. That's it. It has never been anything more than that. Anytime that people say there's, you know, special Fog Whisper treatment or they listen to Fog Whispers more, stuff like that, they don't. They truly, truly do not. It's never been for that. And I don't know where that rumor even started. He's known for a while, but I'm, I'm watching him admit that fact to himself now. Fair enough. Have this drive, this ambition to actually change in a reasonable time the things that are already in the game. Uh, now, uh, covering new content, covering new killers that come every three months. Yeah, we'll always do that. We'll always be there for that. That's always fun. Uh, silly compilations of me screaming at people and funny things happening. Uh, those obviously I'll still make. Uh, tier lists and resources and guides and things for beginners. This is currently <laughs> this is I such think, an odd way to do this. To I love this. This is the thing that I feel the best about doing, and I will continue to do this. In fact, look out for a bunch of updated tier lists coming soon. And challenges such as the 50 win series or other things like that. I think I'm also going to drop Thank at least God. temporarily. At least. Oh, I'm so happy to hear him say that. Thank God, <laughs> because. His streaks were just doing nothing but bad things. Well, I mean, monetarily, it was probably good because it got views and stuff like that. But holy shit, it was literally nothing but bad things. It was all, it was horrible for his mental health. Horrible for the people he's going against because he has to sweat his ass off to do it. It was just miserable for everybody involved. So I'm very happy he's stopping that. Good for him. At least uh, for the most part. It's just, th this game is not in a good spot for this. Uh, as you guys know, they changed the MMR recently, which means that you're going to go against more and more difficult opponents if you keep winning your games uh and that would be fine but every now and then I it was funny i didn't find it funny i just felt bad uh, for just him just the other day i was playing this match and suddenly i found myself chasing this jeff and i thought he was a god like he was running me on tiles where where, where, where none of my mind games were working and i thought okay this is just the ones who are in the team that's insane he then heals someone else really really fast i was cheating you know he had some healing perks so maybe he was possible i don't know i didn't really raise an eyebrow there and then at the end of the game, I have him pinned against the edge of the map and I see his blood and he's there and I hear the, 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 the exit get make noise and I go there and his blood just disappears into the ground. He just, he's just gone. That's, look at the face I, I, <laughs> the face I make when I realize that he just disappeared. Uh, he then teleported behind me and left with everybody else. Oh. And obviously it's, uh, you know, it, it, it turned out it was a cheater. Hold on, I just... One second. That's way too good of a face to not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, this Jeff was really stupid and he made it look really obvious. 
but survivors don't have to be stupid and killers i guess don't have to be stupid or make it obvious you will go against lobbies more and more and more that are difficult that send you to maps that bring bring strong add-ons strong killers strong whatever and you're never gonna know you're never gonna know if you literally got outplayed or if it was someone that is actually good at hiding their cheats uh, i've also heard yeah. reports from people saying that they've been sniped more and more and that uh cheaters have now a that's like actually i know i i'm not streaming this or anything but um in dark and darker i've been like trying to like uh grind the leaderboard i'm like the 50th cleric in the world or something but i i stopped like a couple days ago because there, there are so many cheaters there that it's just it's like doing streaks for this game too like when you're trying that and and you you fail because of something like cheating nothing feels worse than that man it's it's so fucking bad it's just not worth it better stream sniping software uh which would seem to be the case because Rank, the last few uh, days Voyager i've been, I've been right having now. more cheaters than usual and i don't think that there's suddenly more cheaters i just think they're now better at finding particular streamers either that or just a very unlucky streak but yeah uh whatever the case i am i'm i'm gonna shy away from doing that kind of content and prevent myself from just being mad and frustrated i will be playing other games branching out to other stuff god slay the spire so good dvd videos i'll be playing more and more other stuff i i recognize that when i play other games and i branch out to other things i skip the part where he talks about the roadmap change and you missed that part uh i didn't skip anything I'm in this not video as immediately knowledgeable and i'm often not as entertaining or as good at the game um but I'll work on that. I'll try to make content that is compelling to watch for people that are familiar with the game or not. And that's what I that, that's what I'm up to. That's what I'm gonna plan for the next few god knows long how long. But yeah. Uh overall pretty disappointed. Damn. What a broken man. How time joined the world of a living. <laughs> Alright. Um uh, let's go down to the actual QA now. Kind of sad to see in a way. I I think that's I I I'm happy for him honestly. Happy for him realizing stuff that I feel like we all realized a while ago. <laughs> I, I I'm actually happy for him. All right. Okay. Um. I'm gonna go uh walk around for one second and then we'll get started on this shit. Actually, I should put some jazz on. We're gonna need some jazz for this. Spring feud? Feud. I just ate. We're good. Don't waste your time? It ain't a waste of time if we all get to laugh at it. Alright, bear back. so loud. Why did no one tell me it was so loud? <sighs> you know what? Here. What's, what, what's the, yeah, everyone's bitching about light mode. Reddit enhancement suite, is that what it's called? Reddit dark mode. I'll just I'll just load the thread. Nope. How do you do dark mode on the on the new Reddit? Oh, dark mode. There we go. Okay. There. Better. Reddit has a dark mode only if you use new Reddit, which I do not use. I hate new Reddit. I use the old version, so that does not have a dark mode. Okay.
Uh, do you ever plan to implement random perks challenges? A permanent feature available to players at any time it has a lot of fans. Yeah, I've been wanting that too. Not knowing the perks you have until the match starts is so fun. Plus, it opens you to the perk combos you previously sidelined. Such a shame you had to die uh, in order to play like that again. Oh, that's true, because it was only tied to the, the challenge, right? Read the answers from the devs profile. They're not missing the answer. Reddit collapsed some of their answers because there were too many... Co oh, wait, really? Is there a, a better consolidated uh, version of this somewhere? Let me see. Um, no, dead by daylight. Full recap. Does this, okay. Does anyone know, uh, does this recap have all like their downvoted answers too? Because there's a ton. Does it like, does it include the shitty responses? I would like to view the answers without, like, upvote bias. Okay, it's got everything. Okay, cool. We'll use this then. Okay. Um... Will you see the return of some old Rift skins that didn't appear in the shop after so much time? I don't who fucking cares. <laughs> Honestly, for the skin stuff, I'm just gonna skip this stuff. I know you guys know I don't care about skins, so... I'm just going to skip most of that stuff. <clears throat> uh, any plans to add player icons or banners for older DLCs? Love a Saw or Ghostface theme. Even icons for unlicensed killer survivors would be very welcome. Not impossible. I would argue it's um, about fucking 40 seconds in Photoshop. <laughs> That's pretty far from not impossible. But... Yeah, I don't want to do that, Alice, because then, like, I... I don't have context of what they're responding to. I don't know. If it doesn't have the question. It just has the response. It's confusing. Um, love your attention to the community. I mean, look, to be fair, they have been more attentive. That doesn't mean they're giving us anything worth anything when they respond, but they technically have been more attentive. <clears throat> Ever thought about implementing an option to give skins to friends like in Fortnite? Love to give some skins to friends. And friends. Ah, skins. Blah, 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 blah. Um, bots taking over human players after they disconnect. Can we get a reconnect feature for human players? That'd be really nice. That is... That's pretty complicated to add. I make fun of behavior a lot for being really inept with basic programming things and stuff like that, but that's that's pretty confusing. I don't want to do that. It made sense in the past the players couldn't reconnect because the character just disappeared, but it'd be really nice to be able to reconnect and replace the bot. Yeah. Not on a roadmap to do it at this moment, but it's a topic we can... Uh, any priority? I think we're going to go for the second one. The Dead by Daylight team is aware that this is an issue, and we're working on a fix, but we don't have any concrete details as of this time. Okay. Um, any chance of getting more controller settings in the game, such as those in Meet Your Maker? No. I mean, technically... I- I know that counts. We don't have any concrete details as of right now, but we're looking into it. You know what? I'm pressing it. Accounts. The Dead by Daylight team is aware that this is an issue, and we're working on a fix, but we don't have any concrete details as of this time. Uh, with the old characters going 50% off permanently, does that mean they will be 50% off during events? For example, a character go for 20 to 50 shards. Yep. Oh, oh yeah, because I forgot. They're like, aren't they bundling all the old content, like, kind of together now? I thought that's a good decision. I actually like what they did there. Um... Do you plan for survivors to be able to inspect other survivors' builds? Oh, that's, yeah. We already... We saw that one from Otz's video. <sighs> Lol. Uh, have you considered adding some rewards on the free track of the Rift on tier 70 to 85? Is there not? <laughs> I, I, I'm such an idiot with this stuff. Constantly brainstorming ideas for more rewards in the Rift. Not just past 70, but across the board. That counts. The Dead by Daylight team is aware that this is an issue, and we're working on a fix, but we don't have any concrete details as of this time. Why can't uh, we combo pieces in the store so we can check which pieces we'd like to buy before we actually do? Oh, like cosmetics? Uh, it's skins. I just don't care. <laughs> the Dead by Daylight team is aware that this is an issue, and we're working on a fix, but Still we counts. don't have any concrete details as of this time. Uh, would you consider adding or consider additional rewards on daily rituals? Oh, more than just blood points. 
We hope to rework the entire daily ritual system and that would involve improved presentation and rewards. I mean that. The Dead by Daylight team is aware that this is an issue and we're working on a fix, but we don't have any concrete details as of this time. It's a skin thing. That's a neutral one. You guys claimed the last day I made that a dislike of FOMO is why you didn't have prestige awards for past P9, but that doesn't make sense for two reasons. People are free to prestige in their own time, and it's not like their levels are going anywhere, and you already have actually limited time content in the game twice a year with Halloween and Winter events to the point where cosmetics have been accessible for any time for years, haven't been locked behind a window of a few weeks. Why claim FOMO is the reason when you're hesitant to add more rewards for dedicated players when there's already substantial amounts of limited content ready in the game? That's a great question. This is skin related, but it's a great question. Prestige and limited time content are significantly different for us in the sense that the prestige option should always be there for all players, whereas limited content is almost always linked to seasonal events such as anniversary. I think the whole point is why is it limited? Introduce it during the, the seasons, but why make it limited during that, you know? Again, I don't really have a, a horse in the, in the FOMO race. I don't care about FOMO. I'm of the opinion if you want a thing, buy it. If you don't want it, then don't buy it. But people yell at me when I say that, so I'm just gonna <laughs> just ignore that. But um, I do think that that's sort of a non-answer. Which ties again to not wanting to clog up the inventory store for players when the relative season is not active. Clog up? What the fuck does that mean? Clog up. <laughs> you go to a character's page and you see all their skins. Are they talking about like the, the home page or something? There's like five skins on there. That's It's, it's already clogged up. It doesn't... <laughs> That doesn't mean anything. <laughs> That's a stupid answer. That's even more a reason. Wait. Oh. Question two. Oh. Wait, question two? Wait, are these parts of the same question? I'm so confused. Oh, because they... Oh, it's a chain. Okay, I direct follow-up. Gotcha. Uh, that's even more reason as to why you should give prestige rewards. Prestige is something players can always attain year-round. It's an achievable goal attainable just from playing your game. Free appreciate players with passion in regard to prestige events. No promises. I don't know why he's Southern now. But we will kick off the discussion internally to see if something's achievable and keep you updated when enough this changes. Hey. The Dead by Daylight team is aware that this is an issue and we're working on a fix, but we don't have any concrete details as of this time. Uh, buddy. Can you join us? Come on, buddy. Come on. Buddy. Come on. All right. He's just going to stare at me. I should be wearing my glasses so I can read. Um. The new banner and badge system is perfect for this type of reward. Incremental rewards for different prestige levels and achievements slash challenges with the benefit of showing them off in the post-game lobbies which is what most players actually want from rewards, which is very true. Oh, uh, the Dead by Daylight team is aware that this is an issue and we're working on a fix, but we don't have any concrete details as of this time. What about the Amazon Prime skins? Will those come back? Those outfits will be added to the store after a designated period of time. Okay, whatever. Uh, when can we get an announcement regarding Hidden Prestige? You guys did a Hidden Prestige test four months ago. Haven't been any updates ever since. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Constant lobby dodging, inaccurate matchmaking, and the in-game harassment are still major issues most have to deal with because of their prestige level, and hiding these would be an effective and easy change that would help combat these problems. Do we really still have people dodging P100s 77 years after it was introduced? Hey, fair enough. I don't get it, but fair enough. Um, we received positive feedback and results on this pilot experiment, making plans to conduct a larger user research. No public announcement for now. The Dead by Daylight team is aware that this is an issue and we're working on a fix, but we don't have any concrete details as of this time. What's the status of de-pipping outside of DCing? Since grades are not affecting matchmaking anymore, these seems outdated and more punishing than they should. I guess that's true. Is there a possibility to remove these? The Dead by Daylight team is aware that this is an issue and we're working on a fix, but we don't have any concrete details as of this time. Have you guys ever considered uh, implementing sort of a match replay feature where players can review their previous matches? I mean, that would be amazing, but that's really hard to do. That's something we'd love to have ourselves. How that's uh, represent an important technical challenge to do so, and it's not something that's planned for now. It's probably one of the few things I will sympathize with. So the the way um, match replays work, for those who don't know like how game design works, 
um, it's not like a video of the game that you just had. Basically, in order to make that system, you need to track the positions, actions, and movements of every player in every frame, basically, for the entire game. It gets saved to a log, and then basically a match replay is you start a new game with dummy players that instead of take player input, just follow the previous inputs of what was done in that game. So that's how it actually works, and it's it's more complicated than you think to add. That kind of has to be something that they built the game having to begin with, you know what I mean? Just slapping that on, I would imagine, is extremely difficult. So, yeah, Source Engine demos, exactly. It's exactly there. Um, so that that that's hard to do. I, I understand why they can't add that. I would love it, but I don't blame them for not adding that. That's very complicated. Uh, will we ever be able to sell unwanted offerings and add-ons back to the entities versus BP? Okay, I can't, I'm not going to press the behavior button here because this is basically just no. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to say it's super cool that Naughty Bear Scamper Trapper got its unique Mori. I think this is the first actual answer. No. The end. I'm um, hoping to see more skins of that in the future. Uh, thank you for bringing this up. Will we ever see Trapper's base Mori updated? Yeah, all the basic Moris are terrible. There the Dead is. by Daylight team is aware that this is an issue, and we're working on a fix, but we don't have any concrete details as of this time. Oh, wait, no. I, pr I pressed the wrong one that had priority in it. Thank you for bringing this up. This is something we are looking into for sure, though it is not our top priority at the moment. Oh, wait, that's the actual line. <laughs> <laughs> that's where you got the line. That wasn't made up. You just actually just quoted them. <laughs> Dude, it's like that moment when, like, you, you see the character you knew from, like, okay, whatever. Uh, the music of the game is freaking amazing. Agreed, for the most part. Can we get a jukebox so we can listen to the chase themes in both current and pass on loop? Oh, that'd be cool. Like, just change your lobby music, even. That'd be nice. We don't have plans to put a jukebox. So, if you want to hear more of the daily music, you don't have to check it on YouTube. I think that'd be cool to, like, be able to change your default lobby. Because I bet all those models and stuff are still in the game. I think that'd be neat. Uh, can we hope on Sadako skin from mobile? Don't care. Are there plans to offer BP incentives? Uh, for individual killers based on how many people are currently playing them, like the BP incentives for survivor and killer roles, this would give survivors more variety in the killers that they go against. Um, BP incentives for individual killers based on how many people are currently playing them. Okay, so like basically to boost up underplayed killers. Oh, I see. I'm so conflicted with that because that would probably be good for the variety of the game, but I don't want to see more. Like, who wants to see a hag? <laughs> no one plays hag, but for a good reason. No one wants to see hag either, so... I don't think you want to incentivize those types of killers, so... Eh. I'm okay with them not adding that. I'm not even going to up the counter for that one. I don't think I want that. <laughs> uh, this year, there's a lot of game-breaking bugs. Flashlight got kill switch, second time in a few months. A lot of invisible killers and female uh, bugs, too. Any plans to do a health update? I, uh, it would take. I will take future with less chapters, but more simple game. Okay. Um. Yeah, the problem with that is if they do an operation health update or whatever, then the next patch they do will just break it again. So who gives a shit? Like I, it almost seems like it's not even worth it. You know what I mean? Uh, we constantly try to improve the state of the game, but it's unfortunate that some issues keep coming back. Each release is aimed to be stable. And we continue to do the best at that. There are no concrete plans. <sighs> The Dead by Daylight team is aware that this is an issue, and we're working on a fix, but we don't have any concrete details as of this time. The ability to earn blood points through completed challenges in the Tome. Uh, has there ever been an idea of doing career challenges for BP shards? Like, complete 100 generator pairs, like 150. Like, long-term stuff like that. I'm okay with that. Um, the Dead by Daylight team is aware that this is an issue, and we're working on a fix, but we don't have any concrete details as of this time. Uh, would you consider going back to old chapters that didn't get a map and gifting them their own map? Yeah, that'd be cool. Especially since some of them could fit into the newly established realms. Um, oh, this is Dave. I actually like Dave. Absolutely. Maps are tricky for a lot of reasons. There's only so much we can do in a year. That being said, most chapters are built with areas and worlds in mind, even when we do not make them, so we don't... Uh, we never know. They might be created in the future. This is not a promise. Ah, uh, sorry, Dave. I gotta do it. The Dead by Daylight team is aware that this is an issue, and we're working on a fix, but we don't have any concrete details as of this time. Where's Michaela from? She's American. Cool. Uh, showing concept art and new content behind the scenes is very cool. Um, can you show something from the period when the tradition did not exist yet? Okay. Real uh, the hard-hitting questions here. 
Uh, I said that for 2023, you want to do a sci-fi theme for horror. Are there any other themes you want to do for future chapters? Uh, yeah, all chapters have a strong theme we work around. Sci-fi was not an exception, even though it was maybe more of an extreme then. Medieval, feudal Japan, nightmares, folklore. There's always a theme that'll be used in the future. What a non-question. What, what, what a stupid non-question. Hey, are your future killers going to have things about them? <laughs> that is the stupidest question I've ever answered. <laughs> God, I, I hate this, this question more than the answer. <laughs> Are there going to be graphics with the new killer? Will they have a music? <laughs> uh, anniversary chapter is now only going to be original or they sometimes be licensed. No, no rules. Uh, can you share any kind of teaser for the survivor that will join the fog in the next mid chapter update? Well, no, bitch. Oh God, I need to go back to bed. I'm so tired. Uh, is it possible at some point we can change the appearance of the lobby depending on the skin, for example? Um, yeah, that would be sweet. I would love that. That'd be fun. <laughs> I like how Dave basically does. The Dead by Daylight team is aware that this is an issue and we're working on a fix, but we don't have any concrete details as of this time. But he does it in like a way that where he just like ignores it entirely instead of just saying that. <laughs> like someone goes into a hospital they're like doctor i think i'm having a heart attack and they're like oh man that sounds rough see ya <laughs> <laughs> have you considered any shark dinosaur type killers in the game fuck yeah add jaws sure <laughs> uh same rotation of maps can get boring fast do you plan on adding more realms for the characters that currently have no personal realms especially Trickster deserves a cool neon -y scene map or a new good guy be better with a factory. Survivor special maps could be nice as well. Nick's mil... <laughs> I'm so tired. I just said Nick's... Nick's MILF filming stage because I combine movies and filming. I slept like four hours, okay? Um, I'm sure he has a MILF filming stage as well. <laughs> Similar to another question I answered earlier. Please allow me to copy paste. Maps are tricky. There's only so much we can do in a year, which is not much. That being said, realms are built with procedural and reuse, oh, and reuse in mind, and thus it is a, uh, very possible to explore. <laughs> the Dead by Daylight team is aware that this is an issue, and we're working on a fix, but we don't have any concrete details as of this time. Will this map ever make a return? Uh, I'm scared to click this. <laughs> this is gonna someone just put a dick in here. <laughs> oh, what's this? Oh, you know what this is? This is like, uh, is this, isn't this from like the, the early, early version of, uh, like the swap maps where they were like all the swap maps connected in one or whatever or something. Yeah. Like the, the beta beta swamp or something. Yeah. That, that's, I, I was that even in the game? <laughs> I didn't even know if that was in the game. Where did the, where'd the AMA go? Oh, nar. Oh, wait, I have to put it back. Okay. Uh, no. <laughs> Whether it is entire chapters or individual things like a specific perk or survivor killer being added, what is the most fun thing to have worked on and bring to the DVD universe so far? For me, it's the Reddit AMAs. Mandy, you just be a... He just must be a masochist. I love getting abused <laughs> in the comments. Okay. As wholesome as this is, it just doesn't really address anything. Uh, with the addition of the casting of Frank Stone in the upcoming movie, will we have more focus on lore-based content that is not only through archives in the future? I would love to have more connections to the DVD universe and the cosmology since the lore is so powerful. Breathtaking. Oh my god, it's like these people have never read a book by anybody ever. <laughs> this is truly not that great. <laughs> like, when I make fun of DVD lore, people think, oh, I just don't care about lore. I just care about the gameplay. I'm just a comp player that wants one v one something like that. Bro, I fucking love lore when it's done well. You know what? I've spent so many hours reading Wikipedia articles for, of like... D and D lore, learning every single, uh, every single. I am so tired. Every single thing about 
like Baldur's Gate and stuff like that. I love lore. That shit is so cool. It's just DBDs isn't. <laughs> You know more about Bloodborne lore than IRL history? Dude, yeah, you want me to go over like the uh, the old gods and stuff like that? I'll I'll spend the entire stream going over that shit. <laughs> um One of the biggest parts in this game is the music, so many killers get a ton of personality and horror added to them by their music. Some killers, blah 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 have generic music and it makes you so sad. Why? Enemy brain's the best track in the game. Any plans or ideas to give them uh, new music? I mean, I've done them before. They added new music to like Billy and stuff, so I, I can't imagine that they won't do that. It's pretty easy to do, so. I mean, I mean it's not easy. It's, it takes a little bit of time, but it's not that bad. Each music's good. Yeah, a lot of the music in this game is awesome. Um, For the FOV slider, Shadowborn's extra FOV makes the angle of flashlight blinds easier for survivors. Let me fix with the FOV slider update. Now, Ness is not going to change. Something we'll continue to monitor with the use of the FOV slider. Initially, the slider will go on beta tab, allow us to fully test this feature on live build. Yeah, um, it's sort of an awkward thing. I, I it should not make it so the flashlights are, make you easier to blind. Like, you should not get penalized for playing on an FOV that is meant for 2023, you know? That should just be the default thing that it's balanced off of. So, I, I don't think it should change. Just make FOV minimal during pickup. I mean, just make it mechanically not work on the other side. Like, that shouldn't be hard to do. Any plans that a crosshair option? We were in 2024, and it's such a basic feature to be added. Fake news, it's 2023. Uh, no plans. I seem referring to in range killers like Contra Deathslinger, in which the case the choice was intentional to not have them. We wanted to avoid gaminess as much as possible, which meant leaning on physical objects and reactions for feedback. We want to avoid gaminess as much as possible, which meant we're leaning on physical objects and reactions in-game feedback. I feel like that's not consistent at all. Then why do they keep adding new, like, new UI elements that are very useful? They're great. But that doesn't... Seems like... <laughs> they don't want more realism either because they keep adding dumb shit. <laughs> like, it's silly and fun. I love it, but... I feel like it doesn't... That doesn't make any sense. I also heard you can put a crosshair over layer on your screen if you want to. Oh, it's good to them... They've said it before, but it's good to reiterate that the crosshairs are not cheating, just for the dumbasses who still think that. Um, when the Sadak or, or rework hit the live servers, a lot of Unreal mains were very uh, vocally upset about huge changes in how our powers work, requiring players to shift to fundamentally different playstyles, also creating a more confusing experience for the survivors of the upcoming Sadak rework, aiming to make her more similar. Wait, are they reworking her again? I, you guys have to realize I've been basically offline for a week. Are they reworking her again? They just reworked her. <laughs> what the fuck? Huh. I didn't see the roadmap? No, again, I've been like super sick for the past like week. I've been doing nothing online. I basically just been playing just Path of... I guess that's Path of Exiles online, but it just, I've been comatose, so... Please look at the roadmap. Yeah, I'll look at that after this. Uh, we've heard the cries of anguish from Unreal Mains. Our initial reaction was to make Condemned more relevant, but we've reassessed, and yes, hoping to restore much of what players loved about Old Kit while still enhancing it in some ways. We hope her latest kit will resonate with killers and survivors alike. So is the con is the problem that the current Sadako is too weak or too strong? Hey, Prosec, I'm hanging in there, man. I'm extremely exhausted right now, but I'm hanging in there. Uh, she's not fun. Too easy, strong, both. All right, well, sounds like it. <laughs> no answer. And them too strong, other play styles too weak. Okay. After <sighs> uh, the twins rework, what does adjusting the slugging meta mean? First off, uh, slugging down each survivor, stop picking them up and hooking them, leaving them on the ground, rushing off to down more survivors. We noticed that for many players, the optimal way to play the current twins kit is to slug survivors heavily with Victor. Isn't a fun play style for survivors as you end up spending a lot of time on the ground not able to do anything. So the twins update will change the kit to encourage other play styles more often. Eesh. I wonder how that's going to be. Because yeah, I mean, incentivizing slugging is definitely not a good thing, but... 
Uh, does the upcoming tweak for Huntress slated for April have anything to do with how she is the most map-dependent killer? You have seven indoor maps, which makes her power much more difficult. This tweak will not affect her map dependence indirectly. Uh, that's a complex challenge to solve when you do a larger update. For April, we are focusing on making her more enjoyable to play across the board. We hear your concern. We're constantly... The Dead by Daylight team is aware that this is an issue. What is the issue? We're working on a fix, but we don't have any concrete details as of this time. What, what is the main issue with Huntress right now? I feel like Huntress is fine. Maps? Yeah, so maps are the issue, not Huntress. I actually don't think she needs to change at all. Like, there's so many other killers in this game that need to change before Huntress. Like, poor Freddy, man, just choking on the splinters of his fake pallets. Like, there's so many more killers that need way more love than Huntress. Like, Huntress is fine. How many LOS blockers? Yeah, but that's map design. That's not Huntress. A lot of killers suffer from bad, or, like, low LOS. Like, half the killers in the game suffer from low LOS. That's not a Huntress issue. Oh no, her aim was bugged. That's not a change to Huntress. They just fucked up. I don't know. I feel like she's not a high priority right now. Any plans to make Buckle Up not work before the people? This is on our radar. We talked about this in our live design yesterday. Can't tell you what her plans are now. The Dead by Daylight team that is aware this is an issue, and we're working on a fix, but we don't have any concrete details as of this time. It just does. It's a little too strong. Uh, any hints on what the solution for the three gen might be? Uh, PTV goes out in January and all seriousness. What I can say is we have tried very hard to solve the problem without interfering with normal games. We think you'll get a kick out of it. Uh, so, oh God. So what they're probably going to do is make it so you can't like kick a generator multiple times in a certain scenario. That's not the issue at all. That won't fix anything. Yeah, I really hope they think that's that's not the issue. That would have been the issue if, like, maps were okay and Call of Brian Eruption Overcharge was the meta. That would fix that, sure. But that's not the issue right now. The issue of three gens is generators spawning too close to each other. That's it. It's purely a map design thing. Just having a cooldown on kicking or whatever, that's not going to change shit. It's not going to do anything. It fixed the miserable three gen singularity game you played against the other... I don't think it will, man. I bet that Singularity had Jolt, right? That's not going to stop that. Unless you're saying the generator cannot regress in any way, even with perks. That would be crazy. But mostly the issue with 3-genning is, is map design and generator placements. That's always been the main issue with that stuff. Jolt isn't good. I agree Jolt's not good. But still. In a 3-gen it can be pretty useful. Gens that spawn on the edge map more. See, the one counter argument someone brought up to that is that if you're doing a generator on the edge of the map, you have no avenue to run away from the killer if they're approaching you. Because if the gen's in the corner and they approach you, you're just stuck in the corner, right? I still think that's preferable to three gens, though. I think that's better than having a scenario where the gens are within throwing distance. So, I, I, I think... That's the lesser of two evils there. But yeah, the whole thing with three genning is not perks or kicking gens and stuff like that. It's it's the map design. Spawning gens too close together, that's it. That's what causes a three gen. If the gens are not close enough to patrol in a reliable fashion, then we have a scenario where three genning is not something you can reliably do. That's it. So that's a map design issue. And if they just make it so you can't kick gens multiple times, it's not going to fix anything. I might, it might fix the one dude who's still running overcharge or something like that against babies, but it's not going to change it at all. That's the risk reward farther out to get, but if you are found, you're more likely to get hurt. Yeah, that's actually a really good point, and why I think that is a better solution, because if you do do a quarter generator, you're further away from the killer, so the killer has to devote more time to getting to that generator, but also, if he does devote that time, you have way less ways to run away. So, yeah. That's good. <laughs> Poop. Um... Yeah, so... It's a map design issue there. Kicking gens is not going to... Or blocking kicks is not going to do anything. Emblem system gives some information about these things currently, but we don't have any plans... To Wait, what? Oh, shit. Any plans for end-game statistics? Oh, okay. No. No, we don't. I would love that stuff. 
are the level of injured sounds and panting survivors emit going to be normalized soon? Different characters currently get vastly different outcomes on my games depending on who they are because their audio. Very, very true. We've investigated this recently and it isn't as straightforward as it as we hoped. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. If you compare the audio file of Ada and compare the audio file of Jeff, you can visibly see the wavelength difference. One of them is louder than the other one. It takes seven seconds to fix in Audacity. It is extremely simple, simple, simple to fix. This is not something that should be taking them years. It takes a dude with 30 seconds in Google of how to run Audacity. This is such a simple thing to fix. This is not an issue of sounds not generating properly, because that would be more complicated to fix. Like, if this wall was occluding the sound, that's complicated. But no, if you have an Ada, next to some, uh, an Ada and a Jeff next to each other, the Ada is more quiet. That's because the base sound file, they have, they're, they're, they're being played at the same rate, but the base sound recording of the voice actress is lower. That's all it is. It's seriously that simple. Like, I don't, this is not a tech issue at all. This is the original recording that they had is not loud enough. That's it. That's all it is. That shit is inexcusable. So stupid. It is as straightforward as you hoped. I'm sorry that they're just lying. They're just straight up lying there. Or they're just stupid. <laughs> it's, it's one or the other. There's no detective hats here. You're just, you're just lying. It's just, oh God. Why is that the thing that annoyed me the most out of this entire Q&A? That's the one that pissed me off the most. Because they're just lying. It's not complicated. It's very simple to fix. Uh. Oh, is that true, Derek? I didn't actually know that. Even better. Ugh. Okay. Uh, with the recent changes to Trickster, especially the new released buff for uh, 7.4.2, is there any plan on improving Deathslinger experience in any meaningful way? He's not bad with that these 4.6 and 32 meter tears just above tricks to receive. Deathlinger being a 4.4 with same 32 seems to hinder more than it should. And his add-ons are only good for a select few while relegating others to either niche, mediocre, or for most of the both. We don't need plans. We are aware of the made for this update is affected the killer, so we're keeping an eye on him, so we're just not doing anything. Yeah, I feel like, I don't know. Deathlinger should probably be 115 then, if Trickster's going to be 115. It doesn't really make much sense otherwise. Um, you hate 110 as a balance mechanic? Yeah, I, I, I do too. Hunters to 115. Retweet. Um, okay, that's the one we first read. This is a question about the random perk. Uh, we're pumped to have the random perk challenges and uh, we're pumped that they've been well received. I can't draw back the red curtain on future modes or anything right now. <laughs> <laughs> I like how they just unintentionally just behave for themselves. We can't draw back the red curtain on this mode or literally anything ever. <laughs> but <laughs> I know that's not what he meant. He, he was basically saying or anything in relation to future modes, like future modes and, any, and stuff like that, but it's just, I'd interpreted that as, or literally anything else. That's funny. Uh, fact that people really like random perks is something we've noticed as part of our consideration for the future. The Dead by Daylight team is aware that this is an issue and we're working on a fix, but we don't have any concrete details as of this time. Every killer and survivor's bound has their ups and downs. When you notice, for example, killer becomes a thing of frustration. Is it easier to look at the add-ons or the base kit when initializing a balance for the killer? Easier? Well, what we actually do is just take a shit and then just swirl it around and throw it on a wall. Whatever sticks is what we decide for making the, uh, that killer to be better or worse. And sometimes it is not something that we end up liking. Uh, is it currently possible for players to body block other players in certain parts of the match for indefinite periods uh, due to the fact that players maintain permanent collision unless they are a survivor that is damaged? As such, it's very easier for players to hold the game hostage or guarantee a kill on a survivor who's trapped via body blocking. Common suggestion is to leave you the problem to grant survivors with AFK crows no collision so they'd be only be held in place. That's a great idea, yeah. Ensuring that the killers can capitalize off the trap survivor's mistake without abusing the permanent hostage. That's a really good idea. If you have three uh, AFK crows, then you have no collision. That's a really good idea. Any plans to implement a mechanic like this in order to prevent hostage holding in a match? Assume you're referring to body blocking gear. That, that 
the, that's yes, that's the first words that the man said. I. It's not something that we are actively working on. No. Okay. The Dead by Daylight team is aware that this is an issue, and we're working on a fix, but we don't have any concrete details as of this time. Is it currently possible for players to body block other players? Oh, no. It is currently possible for players to body block other players in certain parts of the match. I assume you're referring to body blocking here. <laughs> <laughs> it's really not that funny, but I just found it so fucking funny. <laughs> I've... I've read your body language, and I think what you're getting at is you're insinuating this discussion's about body block. <laughs> okay. Uh, any plans for survivors losing collisions when they have multiple crows? I'm clicking the link a lot. No. <laughs> Why'd you take me to Reddit to just show me no? <laughs> what the fuck? Why? Why would they do that? That's actually so funny. <laughs> we touched on it here. Here, go to this link to find out more. <laughs> the link is just him saying no. <laughs> Although the gap between survivor friends and solo queues reduce... Uh, oh, wait. I think this is the one we saw in Austin's video, right? Yeah, okay. That's a stupid answer. Uh, with the FOV slider coming, what will happen to Shadowborn? <laughs> it's been given new functionality. What a good answer. I assumed it would still adjust your FOV with an FOV slider. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> Got any plans to combat survivors killing themselves on first hook and deliberately? Um, oh, okay, this, this is also discussed too. I don't think I read the exact response that he said. Oh, yeah, no, no, we did. Yeah, I, I, I will fuel for them on this one. This is very confusing to fix. Uh, can you provide clarity about the infamous black bubble, which appears over props like gens and hooks? Black bubble temporarily obstructs or raving from perks like Kindred and Bitter Murmur. Both perks lose immediate value until the sphere overlay dissipates. Since its introduction, the community has been uh, has received conflicting responses about this unintended behavior. Infamous indeed! Although it has some disliked interplay with props and auras, the black bubble serves a purpose as it stands, and we don't have a current plan to address it directly. Yeah, didn't they say they did, though? I'm, I'm almost positive in one of their previous AMAs, they absolutely said that it was just an outdated feature and they're going to change it. Um, you can tell we've recently greenlit a rework to our aura system that we're planning to move forward sometime soon. It won't change the black bubble, but it should make aura reading better. Oh, is like the aura going to like be read through the, the black bubble then, I guess? If they do that, that's fine, I guess. Whatever. They don't know how to fix it, so they're doubling down on being implemented. <laughs> or uh, being intentional. Yeah, I... I what, what is the... Op like, what is the reason it exists? Does anyone know? Did they ever actually admit what the point of the black bubble is? Because I, I, I don't think it serves any purpose whatsoever. I'm actually going to open this up to chat. Because I don't know. There's, there's, it serves no purpose. <laughs> they said the point of the black bubble was obstruction? So the point of it is to be annoying? <laughs> it's not like a stupid base game picture. The point of the black bubble was uh, to obfuscate the direction the killer moves after hooking. Yeah, but you know where they're getting hooked! Already. <laughs> it's the find a hook survivor while you're suffering from blindness. That's probably the only actual answer I can think of so far. We had this conversation months ago. I know I'm getting deja vu. I feel like we've had this exact discussion before in the last video about this. That's actually really funny. Um... Uh, can we get specifics on the change to save the best for last? It's one of those perks that I don't feel like needs a lot of adjusting because it only helps on one killers as opposed to higher tier killers like Nurse or Blight. True. The Dead by Daylight team is aware that this is an issue and we're working on a fix, but we don't have any concrete We should know what they're doing time. for that pretty soon, though, I think. Hey, Princess, thanks for the raid. Um, 
Boon, Scourge, and Teamwork perks were all added as a unique type of perk, but then abruptly stopped seeing new additions shortly after. Do you have any plans to revitalize these to be as recurring and as common as Hex and Exhaust perks? Yeah, that's pretty funny. They just... A new base mechanic! Moon Totems! For like two patches, and then they're gone forever. I agree that our perk types are pretty interesting. <laughs> God damn, Mike. Slurp it on yourself a little bit. I think we're pretty awesome. I should see some new action, but I can't promise anything. We always try to match the theme of the attached characters. We always try to support these underused strategies and uh, counter overused strategies whenever possible. Sometimes the elements take us to specific designs that don't always line up with specific types. I feel like, I feel like Mike is not great at this. Uh, with the return of Stranger Things, many useful perks have now disappeared from the pool of common perks. Oh, yes, you saw this on Otsis thing, too. Which, yeah, also a bad response. Um, as it currently stands, a lot of information in the game is obscured from killers. Most notably, killers are unable to see the hook stages of survivors. Many players argue that this is necessary to discourage kinner kinners from tunneling. But other like myself, uh, believe that killers who choose to tunnel will do so any anyway without needing a reminder. That's extremely true. Cannot agree more. There are many other instances of hidden information, such as the plague's infection progress, the pig's RBT timer, etc. Any consideration to reveal this kind of important information to killers, even if it comes at the cost of compensation nerf? It's true that tunnelers are going to tunnel, but it's also a killer strategy we don't want to outright support via our UI. We don't have any plans to reveal this information. Dude, am, am I the only person that actually wants that so I don't accidentally tunnel? <laughs> I feel like every time, like, I'm like, okay, I I, I don't think this person's a death hook, and then I hook them early, and I'm like, oh, fuck, wait, <laughs> the guy was a death hook, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I think there's no reason to not show killer's hook states, because like they said, killers that are going to tunnel, they very clearly remember who they're tunneling. They, they note it to themselves. Michaela with the stupid hat, that's who I'm tunneling. It does not stop anything. It's not like they're just going to look at the UI and go, Oh, wait, I don't remember who I've tunneled. My whole plan is not working anymore. Oh, no. Like, they, they know who they're tunneling. It doesn't change anything. So, I think it should absolutely be visible. Tunneling is always the right thing to do. That is a monkey take. <laughs> no, it is not. Okay, go go find the, the comp survivor in your match and try to tunnel them. See how that works. <laughs> Good luck, man. Um, any considerations to revealing this kind of important information to killers? Oh, I just read that. I'm stupid. You tunnel the weak link? Yeah, how do you find the weak link? By not tunneling. <laughs> Once, sure. Once you've spread pressure to all four survivors and you've determined who the worst survivor is, then, then sure. Then tunneling is the smart choice. But that precedes you not tunneling to begin with. You tunnel the weakest survivor, and how do you find out who the weakest survivor is? You still have to chase everybody. Which means, at the very least, you're not tunneling for portions of the match. If, you're, if your advice is find the weak link and then get them out as quickly as possible, um, then sure. I, I think that, that more gears toward being a smart thing to do. But if you just find the first guy and you just start tunneling him, you're just rolling the dice and whether or not they're good, that's a really bad idea. <laughs> or just find the Leon. Okay, fine. If this is a Leon, then sure. If you're that good at killer, they're all weak links? No, of course not. That's I don't think that's true either. There's no situation where it's better not to tunnel. Ah, oh, man. What, 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 what has the, the killer community done to new killers in this game? God, they have just completely... No wonder everyone sucks at this game now. <laughs> God. I, just, I just feel bad for them at this point. I mean, you know they're all new players, but like, god damn. So many people have done so much damage to the average killer mindset. What's making me assume someone's new at the game? If you're... Let me clarify this to make it extremely clear. If the advice is to spend a little while analyzing who is the weakest at chase and then tunneling them out of the matches as quickly as possible, 
then yes, I will say that that's not a bad idea. I don't do that because I find that just cringe. But if you think that is, you know, if you're just solely trying to win, then yes. Spending a little bit of time finding who the weak link is by chasing everybody and seeing who's the worst. Yeah, you're, you're, you're that, of course, that's going to be a good idea. The original comment was tunneling is always best idea. Like you load into the match and you just tunnel one guy till he's out of the match. So without context, that's a stupid sentence. Because no, that's not the good idea. Um, but yeah, if we if we dissect that comment a little bit and then say that, sure, if you actually spend time finding out who is the worst and then going for them, then okay. Then sure, I would agree. Um, in terms of it being a good idea for winning. I guess the, the comment that pisses me off the most is you have to tunnel to win. Uh, it's just generic music, Rodokun. Just Google royalty-free jazz. Yeah, so, all right. Nobody said you have to, so what's relevance? Okay. If, if that's what we're, we're, uh, we're splitting hairs on, then, then yes, I agree. It's just the best strategy. To find the weak player and tunnel them out. Yes, that's fair. Okay. Um, what else we got? Uh, Frank Stone. I'm honestly, I don't care. I mean, I'll probably play that game, but it doesn't really affect us right now. You think gen progress or action speed should be given uh, to survivors not to chase for punishment for killer straight tunneling? No. No, I don't. I think they just need to unnerf Decisive Strike. Um, latest news on the cheating situation. You experienced six cheaters in the last four days. And it's really annoying. Really? Dude, I don't even remember the last time I saw a cheater. I get a cheater like once every four months, maybe. Are people actually encountering this many cheaters? I feel like that's copium. I don't know, man. I, I think that's just legit copium. I don't doubt that there are cheaters because they are. But there's no way you're getting six cheaters in the last four days. Man, that's just... I'm not saying my experience is everyone's and I'm not trying to like, you know... Uh, you know, I'm not trying to like gaslight you and say you're crazy or anything like that, but... I, I, I don't know why my... my experience would be so much different compared to that. Like, if they say, like, you know, they, they get one cheater a month or something, I'd be like, okay, that's still way more than me, but fine, that's fair. But this dude's encountering a cheater basically every day. More than that. He's encountering, like, 1.3 cheaters a day. That's... <laughs> it's maybe he plays 20 hours a day, true. <laughs> maybe he plays 20 hours a day. People are subtle hacking and it's rampant. People are also not hacking and killers are losing their goddamn minds because they just there's so many little effects that give you haste and stuff now that it becomes harder and harder to detect until after the game again i am not saying cheats don't exist they absolutely do i'm just saying there's no way they're that common <laughs> there's no fucking way i don't give a shit about cheaters no 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 no. i absolutely give a shit about cheaters i'm saying i don't give a shit about the cheating problem right now because it's not a problem for me I'm not noticing cheaters. Like, it's it's just not a thing. Back when we had cheaters sniping lobbies and, you know, just holding our games hostage, oh yeah, it was awful. I hated that shit. Cheating is a massive problem when it's that prevalent. I'm saying because of how rare it is, it's not really a widespread problem, like, at all. But, no, when when it is, like, in epidemic levels of cheating, oh god, that shit was, it was unplayable. It was horrible. So yeah, don't get me wrong. Cheating is a huge problem. I just don't think it's widespread at all right now. I think there's very, very little of that going on in comparison to the average player base, you know? Um, but yeah, they, they they definitely do exist. I'm just saying it's not this much. Um, cheating is a constant war. We're always updating their tools to combat the situation. The cheaters upgrade theirs. It's a cycle. That's true. You can, of course, support the players and the team. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I mean, that, I mean that, that that's pretty fair. Anti-cheat is basically an ongoing war. It's just they patch this thing, then, kill, or then people find a new exploit where their teeth will work again, then they patch that, and then it's just an ongoing thing, so. Um, what we see statistics for kill rates, escape rates divided by killers, survive with friends, solo duo, and MMR for the past year. We love data. I know. Uh, statistics are something the community team wants to regularly communicate about with the community. That's a lot of... That's a lot of communication. Community team regularly communicate with the community. Uh, we started looking over the past few months with perk usage, and yes, we're looking to do more of the coast of... Uh, one more of the road. The Dead by Daylight team is aware 20. this is an issue, and we're working on a fix, but we don't have any concrete details as of this time. 
Mm -mm -mm. Uh, that's not true anymore, Helix. You're talking about the Fog Whisper whitelist that happened at one point. Um, that was a very short-lived thing that I have confirmation does not exist anymore. That was back when, like, people literally could not play the game. There was so many cheating. Or so much cheating. Um, that does not exist anymore, though. All right, well, we got to 20. That's pretty good. Was the article helpful? No. 